Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Yesenia and today I'm going to be making a video on like the bare necessities that you need when you're pregnant and you're going to have a newborn. You don't know what to get. You don't know what to buy. This is what you need. So I remember when I was pregnant, I kept searching what do I really need versus like what do I want? And I'm going to make a video later on like the zero to six month essentials uh, and must haves that I feel like were very useful and like things that are extra that were like awesome. But in today's video, I'm going to share like kind of like the minimalist approach to it and like what you actually just need maybe for those first few months, weeks or whatever it may be. I'm talking about like real basic like diapers, bassinets and all that good stuff. So let's get started. So the first big item that we're going to talk about is a car seat. In the US, at least I think most hospitals will not let you leave home without one. And it's just something that you're going to need and use often, especially obviously if you have a car. So I would say that's like the number one thing to have before it's a rush hour with a pregnancy. So the one I have is the Chico Bravo car seat stroller combo. And I really recommend this because it has been a lifesaver when she has been sleeping in the car and then we need to go out to the store or wherever it is. We just take out the car seat and then click it on the stroller and then she's good. She'll be asleep, we can cover her and the light won't bother her. And it's just been really awesome for us. I have loved it and at eight months, she still uses it um, great. She fits in it awesome. So item number two is the bassinet and take this with a grain of salt. You don't really need to have a bassinet by itself. I know moms that do the pack and play situation where they can use uh, have something that has multiple uses. I myself, I just got a bedside bassinet because I felt it was easier. But if you're on a budget, a pack and play is really good for that or um, unless you're gonna co-sleep. But essentially just somewhere you can put the baby down safely to sleep while you go use the bathroom or pump or sleep or whatever you gotta do mom because believe me, it's gonna be busy for that first couple of months. <laughs> I will say that the one I have, I'll show a picture here, I don't have it anymore, but I don't recommend this one because I got this one to prevent our cats from jumping in the bassinet. And honestly, the cats jumped on top of the net and the net sunk down. Thankfully, they never actually liked being on baby, so that was a good thing for us. And big item number three, which I guess is kind of big, would be like a little play gym, play mat area where you can put the baby down. And they're entertained, you know, doing their own thing. I say this is the big item just because I guess it's the most space taking. But, I mean, there's so many options out there. It doesn't have to be the most expensive one. I know prices can vary a lot. But just get something affordable. As long as the toy is dangling in front of your baby's face, they'll be entertained, believe me. It's just somewhere you can put the baby down, you know, looking at little things. They start learning eye coordination with the toys and all that good stuff. So I really recommend one. Now we're moving on to the smaller items, the necessities. So the number one basic necessity would be a diaper. Now, these are the disposable diapers, but if you want to invest on the reusable cloth cloth diapers you definitely can um i just use disposable because for me i'm lazy <laughs> and i don't want to be washing and giving myself an extra chore but if you go the cloth route that's awesome i commend you but yes you're gonna need diapers i i know a lot of people will say to just go to the size one diaper because you never really know the size of the baby and a lot of them skip the newborn i guess size but i don't agree with that I say definitely buy at least a pack of newborn diapers because trust me, you don't know the size of the baby that's going to come out of you. And speaking of not knowing the size of your baby, we're going to move on to clothes. Definitely have a few outfits ready and most people recommend having most of your outfits zero to three months or whatever, but I really recommend having at least a few newborn outfits because you just don't want the baby to come out smaller than expected and then have really huge oversized clothes. I thought my baby was gonna be like a really huge baby and then when she was born, she actually fit in the newborn clothes for like two, three weeks before we even had to switch to the zero to three. And those two to three weeks you might think is not a long time, but I would, I would say definitely have a few outfits to have her switch in and out. And with that being said, I do recommend just having comfortable pajamas for the newborn baby. I know we're all so excited to get the baby dressed up and all cute, but really, they're just going to be sleeping all day. And I mean like all day. <laughs> I don't know about you, but when I'm sleeping, I like to be comfortable. So that's kind of how I felt for the baby. And then obviously as she got older, now she's eight months. I'm like dressing her up all the time when we go out. 
But in those first couple of months, I just, it was pajamas. So footies, if it's winter, or I guess if it's summer, a little something, a little more cooler that has like the feet sticking out or something. But I had a winter baby, so she was in footies all day and all night. And it was cute. <laughs> the next item I recommended having on board would be a blanket. And it doesn't have to be a huge blanket, but maybe something that you can use for warmth, but maybe also to swallow if you're gonna be into that. Babies are so cold when they're newborns. I mean, they just really want all the warmth. They were in a little ball inside of you for the longest time. <laughs> so I recommend just having a blanket, a light blanket on hand. I use this one all the time when she was first born. And what I love about it is since it was like so thin and breathable in a way, we would use this to swallow her at nighttime as well. Or not at nighttime, all the time, because that's when she slept. <laughs> so we would use this to swaddle her, and then when we would go out in the car, since it was winter, sometimes we would use this to cover the car seat. But if it's really cold, which it was where I live, um, I recommend having like maybe a thicker blanket, you know, and that has a little more substance to it, so it keeps the wind or cold air out. We would use something like this to just cover the car seat on the transfer from the house to the car, but I do want to say it's important that you don't actually have blankets in the car seat while you're driving because that can be a vacation hazard. So just keep in mind for that. So the next item are going to be some burp cloths. And I mean, I got these off Amazon. I'll link it below. They're just so useful. I mean, you can put it over your shoulder when you're patting the baby. If they spit up, it's going to be on here. When the baby's drinking milk and they start spilling because they're falling asleep, just boop, 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 boop tap it away. I still use these today, especially now that she's teething and she's drooling all over the place. I use this all the time to clean her or after she's done eating. So I would say, I mean, eight months in and I'm still using it. This is a really great and a cheap investment. So I really recommend some burp cloths. One thing I wasn't prepared for was cutting baby's nails. <laughs> and I mean, guys, their nails are so teeny tiny and so thin and fragile. I mean, honestly, it's scary coming in with like a nail clipper and thinking like you're gonna catch your skin because that was my fear and I was just really scared honestly. So what I recommend for like a first time new mom is having the nail filer and I'm sure you've seen it on some other videos around YouTube. It's the electric one. And to be honest with you, this is how I cut my baby's nails for the first few months, just like this. I didn't use a nail, I mean a nail clipper because I obviously was afraid and this was just so easy. It did take me a little longer and I could only do it when she was asleep because obviously I don't hurt moving. But I mean, it worked for those first few times if you're scared like me. Now I can actually clip her nails and it's all good. But if you're a first time mom who's definitely afraid of clipping your baby skin, <laughs> this is a really good alternative. And the last thing I recommend to really have on hand for the newborn necessities would be a thermometer. I know we've all seen this in COVID times, <laughs> but this is a little baby one. And the reason I think this is an essential is because babies are just so fragile and it's really important that if they have a fever, especially under two months, you have to take them to the hospital right away. I know that happened with me. At some point, my baby, she was three months and she had a fever, so we called the doctor, they took us in. And I just liked having this tool. It's really easy to read. I mean, you just click the button. And boom, there you go. I mean, it doesn't get easier than that. I do know they have the armpit thermometers. They have the rectal thermometer, which I'm not doing that. And then just this type, which is so easy. And it's always going to be off by maybe like point something. I mean, you just take it a few times and you go from there. But yes, I say this is an essential because you just want to make sure your baby is good, safe, and no fever. Actually, going back to the diaper situation, you definitely need some wipes. I mean, you're going to have to wipe the pee and the poop off the baby so this is the way unless you have a different way i know it's obvious but i just want to mention this so you can have like just a clear list of what you actually need you know and guys that's all for the baby section i mean that's all they really need besides being fed sleeping and pooping and then some playtime in there that's all they really need they don't really need all the extra mama roos and this and that those are nice and they can make your life easier yes but do you need them 100%? No, you don't. So that's my take on that. 
So now I do want to move on to the mom side because mom, you need to take care of yourself too. So for moms, the first thing I recommend is having a postpartum kit. What you want in this little postpartum kit are like the essentials for bathroom changes. I really recommend having it in the bathroom, somewhere close where you don't have to move around to get to these items. Maybe on top of the toilet, next to it, whatever works for you. But in this little kit, I would suggest having pads, diapers, because when you leave the hospital, I guarantee you, you're gonna be wearing diapers. And honestly, for me, it was easier to just wear a diaper, change out the diaper when I use the bathroom and just put a brand new fresh one rather than try to use a pad at that moment because it was just so much of the extra postpartum stuff. That's just what worked for me. I would recommend having diapers there, pads, the little container of tux, dermaplast, and then some type of peri bottle, whether it's the one from the hospital or the one, the Frida mom that everybody knows. I did buy the Frida bottle, peri bottle, and it worked really well for me because obviously it has the angle, so it's much easier to access where the water needs to go. But yeah, I, I think it was great and I recommend it. You just have to make everything easier and accessible for you in that moment because it's gonna be really painful for the first few times. I mean, everybody's different, but this was my experience. So you don't wanna be in pain and then having to walk across the bathroom to get your pads. Okay, so for station number two for moms would be a breastfeeding station. I think I have a picture and video that I can also post here, but basically I went to Target and I bought this little three tier cart. On the top part, I kind of just used it as a little table. The second section was snacks because when you're breastfeeding, you're gonna get hungry and the baby's gonna be sleeping on you and you're not gonna wanna get up. <laughs> but I had snacks on the second tier and then on the third tier, it was just full of water bottles because girl, you're gonna get thirsty and you're gonna wanna be drinking a lot of water because you're breastfeeding, if that's what you're doing. And even if you're not, I mean, it's always just good to stay hydrated, especially after this big body change that your body just had. So I just recommend having waters down there, snacks in the second layer, and the top one, I mean, you can just do whatever you want with that one. I'd use it as a little desk because I didn't have a desk in my room. So that's my recommendation. And this little station is not just a breastfeeding section. It's just, I mean, for anybody that's feeding the child, you know, you can be pumping and then have your pump stuff on there. Or if you're formula feeding, you can just have, I mean, snacks and water there anyway. It's essentially just a little mom station for you to just chill, relax, and not have to be getting up around the house to get your little necessities. All right, so for moms, feeding-wise, for the baby, I mean, there's like so many options. If you're breastfeeding, essentially, you just need the boob. <laughs> if you're pumping, you need a breast pump and a milk bags so you can put the milk away. And then if you're formula feeding, I mean, obviously, you just need some formula. And whatever route you decide to take, just there's not really much you need to buy for all these things. Just as long as you have you know, a few bottles, a breast pump, formula, a little bit of everything, then you'll be good. And one thing I do recommend as well, just my opinion, is even if you're breastfeeding or you plan to just breastfeed or pump or whatever it may be, I do recommend having just a backup stash of formula just in case because you never really know when you might need it. And a lot of places actually offer a free baby stuff. I made a video on it and they offer free formula cans. I didn't expect to use a formula since I planned on breastfeeding, but there was an incident one time where I had to go to the hospital for a family member and I didn't have extra milk. So that day she just drank formula. I mean, and it was all good because I didn't have any extra milk in the fridge. But if I didn't have that formula in hand, then it, things would have been a little more complicated. So I always recommend at least having one can of formula, whether you plan to use it or not. And then if you never use it, you can always just donate it or give it to a friend. And if you are breastfeeding, I recommend buying some nipple cream. Your nipples are gonna be sore, they're gonna be cracked, and they're gonna hurt. <laughs> At least that was my experience. I bought the nipple cream from Organic Mama, I think it was called, and then from Lanonin. I think the Lanonin one really helped, and it's still safe to have on there even if the baby decides to eat later. But I think it really helped with healing the nipples, especially since baby's constantly feeding and they're not getting a break. You need it. I really recommend it. Next thing would be some nursing bras. Now look, even if you're not breastfeeding, even if you're not pumping, these are gonna grow big. <laughs> you're just gonna have to size up a few sizes on your bras. And honestly, nursing bras are all I wear now because they're so much more comfortable. They don't have the lace, lace. They don't have the wiring underneath that just like hurts your boobs. 
So I really recommend nursing bras, especially if you're breastfeeding because you can do a little clippy thing, which I didn't even know was a thing until I got pregnant. Like what? <laughs> it's so cool how you can just unclip it, baby feeds, and then you just put it back. And if you don't want one of those clippy ones, I know at Target they sell, kind of looks like a little sports bra in a way where you can just literally pull it down, boob is out, and then just tuck it back in. But I definitely recommend some type of nursing bra because regular bras are just not gonna be your friend for a while. My next tip is just having clothes that fits. And honestly, I still struggle with this today, eight months postpartum. Your clothes pre-pregnancy, it's just not gonna fit. And you want some comfy lounging clothes if you're gonna be home all the time. You just wanna be comfortable and not have to feel bad about what just happened to your body because you gave birth and that's a beautiful thing. So obviously you're still gonna have that mom tummy. No matter how you gave birth, you're gonna have it most likely. And some women just take longer to recover than others. But yeah, you just want some clothes to fit and feel comfortable. You don't wanna feel tight and then insecure, I would say. So that's my tip. Just buy some clothes that fits you. If you're still pregnant, I would recommend not just buying maternity clothes, but just size up on the clothing. So if you were a medium, maybe buy like some large, extra larges. So postpartum, you can still wear it, feel comfortable. And it's not just like a maternity clothing, if that makes sense. The next thing I recommend are some hair clips. I mean like those big chunky ones that you can just wrap your hair in and, and forget about it. Because your hair is always going to be in your face. And I don't know if you know this, but postpartum, you're always hot. <laughs> and I mean like sweating. Like every time I would feed the baby, it was I was sweating. It's just a thing. So if you have long or medium hair or whatever, I definitely recommend having some clips, some hair ties, and getting that hair out of your face. It's just so convenient. And I lived in clips for quite a while. This next thing is an essential and it would be your prenatals or vitamins. I mean, listen to what your doctor gave you or recommended, or if not, just buy some over, over the counter. I kept taking my prenatals that my doctor prescribed to me even after I gave birth because, I mean, just because it says prenatal, they're still just as good um, postpartum. I mean, they're just all great vitamins. And I still try to take them to this day. Sometimes I forget. But it's really important, especially because you want your body to, you know, start recovering from all the things that your body has done and is doing and recovering. So you just really want to make sure you have all those vitamins and all that good stuff in your body, replenishing what just happened. And the last thing that I recommend for moms is to have some type of feeding tracking app. Now, this doesn't have to be the app that has all the leaps and all this crazy overwhelming information, but what I did use is one called Baby Tracker. And I still have it downloaded on my phone, <laughs> but basically you can track their feedings, their diapers, sleep time, pumping, and then some other activity that you may put in there yourself. I really only used it for the feeding section because I wasn't really too concerned with the other sections. But for feeding, I did keep track because as a newborn, it's important that they feed every three hours. And I do like that the app lets you track which side they would be fed on if you are breastfeeding because you may think you're gonna keep track, but after doing it so many times in a day and then you're sleep deprived, you're gonna forget which side you, they may be fed on. And the last thing you want is having a clogged duct because let me tell you, they hurt. And if I wanted to, I can also track the sleeping and diapers. I did diapers for maybe like two or three days right before we went to the doctor's appointment to make sure she had all her six, seven dirty diapers or whatever that my mom was, and she was good. So I just didn't feel like I needed to track that. I wasn't too concerned about it. And then for sleep, I tried to track it once, I think, but it's just too much. I can't sit there and track every single time she went to sleep because I would lose sleep over that. <laughs> Um, but yes, I just recommend having some type of baby tracking app. That one was free and it was the first one I think that popped up in the Play Store. And that is it guys. Those are like the newborn essentials and basics that I think every mom or parent needs. And then for the mom section, I just think these are things that you're gonna want, you're gonna use, and I really recommend having overall. It just makes life a little easier for us moms who just went through this big ordeal but i hope you guys enjoyed this video please let me know if this is useful or if you have another like really basic essential that i didn't mention or i forgot please leave it in the comments below so others can read it and get ideas and bounce off each other like that and that's it for this video if you liked it please like and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time <laughs>